All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Fears video with Fat Phil, and we have got an FAQ for you all today. Let's dive right in. I do apologize that I've been doing a lot of coverage on this Crate Dragon raid and some of the changes there, but it is the big news in the game right now, and I want to make sure you have all of the information possible. So let's dive right into our FAQ series here. This is FAQ number 12, and the first topic I want to cover is Guild Currencies. So I got a lot of questions about how you should be spending guild currencies, how do we want to use this, and a lot of people were pointing out that characters like Dengar, Gamorrean Guard, and Kylo Ren that you need for these Galactic Legends that are in the guild store, they're going to be tougher to obtain because you're not going to get as many guild tokens. So let's kind of talk about how I think you want to be building these characters and spending your currency. So, the first thing with guild tokens, you're just going to ignore all this gear. You need to ignore all this gear and only focus on the character shards. Because earlier, you know, in when you're doing other things, you'd be building, you know, you'd be buying the gear and then also buying the character shards when you could see them. I think now it's just you've got to focus on the character shards themselves. Remember, you're going to get this from Territory Wars. You're going to get that from your daily guild activities. So make sure that you're maxing out those daily activities as much as you can. And then obviously make sure you're participating in Territory Wars. You cannot afford to skip Territory Wars now because these guild tokens are going to add up quickly. Or you're going to lose them and not get as many if you're not participating in those Territory Wars. So that is a big piece that you're going to need to be doing. So I would say that with this currency, just ignore all of this stuff. I'm in a different position where I'll be able to spend this on gear because I've got all these characters. But if I was a newer player... I am focusing on getting the characters I need for Galactic Legends or whatever farms I'm doing out of here with my guild tokens and using my currency for gear elsewhere. So we'll go then next to the MK1 raid tokens. So with these things, you're going to want to spend this on your gear down here, right? The I'll call this your pit gear. So stuff that you got in the pit raid and the tank raid, this is where I would be spending it. So Stuff like your Mark IV comm links, these are pretty hard to get. I wouldn't mind spending it on that. I would not spend it on Carbonis right now. I just, I don't think Carbonis are going to be good value here comparative to something like your Mark VII Nubian scanners. Even some of these pieces here, right? Your your bed pack components. Uh, where are some of these other like pieces you don't really think about? Th like this stuff here. Remember that with this change to the reward structure, you're not going to get these random rewards anymore. So like this Mark 8 Blast Tech weapon mods. I'd get so many of these from different raids. But you're going to have to think about buying these if you start running out. So my recommendation for everybody will be see where your inventory is lying. See what you have a lot of, what you don't have a lot of. You know, Mark 8 Electro Binoculars. I never farm these. I just get them in raid drops. So you're going to have to start thinking about how to earn this stuff and saving your currency that way. I don't think you're going to just be able to sit here and buy all the Carbonis you need for your account out of this. I think that is going to be mismanaging of these resources. You're going to need to look at each of these things. What do you need? And if you don't need anything, maybe save it a little bit, bank it up, right? You can store it up to 30,000. So just, I would be, you're, I think what they're, the one thing with this change that I would say, yes, it's giving you the option to pick but you've got to be careful with what you're spending it on. That You can't forget about some of these little pieces like this and you know the stuff that isn't your core gear that you were only getting in raids. That's where I'd be spending this stuff. You know, the, Especially something like this. These pieces, your Mark IX, Electro Binoculars, some of that stuff that you're not getting elsewhere, that's where I would be looking because it's not any, you can't get it anywhere else, so you've got to use this currency for it. All right, for Mark II currency which you'll still get in like your Sith raid. You want to be looking at farming it, farming your gear 13 stuff, right? So it starts here. You want to work on your gear 13 stuff for both the, the left side and the right side. Um, I'd say that you want to be focusing on the pieces that you currently need. So something like this piece, I've only got 38 of these. If I needed 60 of them, I'd buy that, right? You know, you don't be afraid to hang on to this gear for a little bit. Um, but that's, that, there's not really a lot of strategy here in terms of just buying what you're going to need when you need it. It's going to be my recommendation for everyone. I think that, you know, these pieces in here, 
are what used to drop in that Sith raid. So I just make sure that you're buying enough of these to continue to sustain the farms that you're going to be completing. I would not be using the Mark II currency unless you are an endgame player that does not that has every character at relic levels. You don't need gear anymore. Then you could maybe spend your Mark II currency on these relic materials. But I think these are way overpriced for, I mean, 800 of these for, you know, the same. Look, I'm going to get 15 of these things for the same price as I'm going to get for two Carbonite circuit boards. Like you're paying a huge premium for this. If this was a 20, that'd be a different conversation. But two for 800 of these compared to, you know, 850, you know, 855 currency. So basically a little bit more expensive for 15 of these compared to two Carbonite circuit boards. I mean, that is just ludicrous to me. That is a, there's definitely, I feel like these are almost, I don't know that these are typos, but I feel like they should be with how those are, that's just, I, this is way overpriced, I think, for the relic pieces. Now, if you don't have anything else to buy, you know, you're someone who doesn't need that gear, then yeah, I mean, this is the logical explanation is just buy this stuff. But even then, you could probably get a better scrap rate for some of the other relic things by buying this stuff with Mark II currency. So I definitely think the relic pieces are a bit overpriced for what you're getting, at least for those pieces. Now, with your Mark III currency, if you're in a guild that's getting Mark III currency and you need arrow magnifiers, that's going to be the best bang for your buck because they're, they're going to be the most rare piece in the game now. I just They will be the most rare piece in the game because they're no longer in the challenge pit raid. If you have plenty of them, I'd be looking at your impulse detectors and zimbital cards and Gerda keypads, right? Your relic seven to relic nine pieces, I think are gonna be where this currency gets best spent. Again, there's not that many guilds who are actually getting this currency. So I think for a lot of people, it, this is just, you know, you don't really need this information about the Mark three, but for Mark two, I think you're just, Focusing on this gear, right? Your gear 13 gear, ignoring the relics. Mark 1, it's all the stuff you need for, you know, pre-gear 13 that you only could get in raids. I wouldn't be worrying about core gear with that. And then as much, not that you shouldn't buy some core gear at times, but I wouldn't be worrying about it as much. I'd be more focused on the raid gear. And then obviously with your guild tokens, focus on shards. And then once you do have all the shards, then you can use those guild tokens for that core gear and supplement that way. All right, so that's the first topic, right? The thing we do need to mention here, right? Is the channel is trying to reach 5,000 subscribers. When we hit, when we reach 5,000, Wampa will hit Relic 8 on a special live stream. We are at over 4,700 subscribers. You all are amazing scholars, legends alike. Please smash that subscribe button and leave all those likes and comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let's keep going on with our FAQ here. All right, Proving Grounds. I got a lot of people asking me, should you refresh Proving Grounds? And this is very similar to the way I think about anything with refreshing crystals, spending something like that. You only refresh Proving Grounds if, one, you're going to unlock that character. You know, you have the currency to do it. You're going to unlock the character. But also, for example, if, you, if you're two things away from getting Darth Malgus, so you do your free one and you need one more, you can unlock Darth Malgus. You do not refresh it unless you have the gear Omicrons and Zetas to get the most use out of him. That if you just do that refresh and then you have a gear eight Malgus, I mean, you better get that stuff quickly, right? Because it, you just spent 2,200 crystals. You spent a huge premium to get him faster. And now you're not even going to really be able to use him. So my advice is you only refresh proving grounds. If you're going to be able to take that character from, you know, gear one to a really good level for your account, which if you're 4 million, that's basically relic levels. I mean, I think that's standard. It should just be relic levels if you're going to refresh. Otherwise, I think you should just wait. I don't think it's worth it to try and do it early. It's just my opinion. There's not really much more to say on that. You know, proving grounds are what they are. I just, I don't like when I see people spending current, spending those crystals on them. And then they're like, oh, Malgus is stuck at gear nine, but I got the unlock. Like you just blew 2000 crystals that you could have used to get the gear that you need so that the next go around you got him and then boom, you've got him geared up. I mean, I don't know. You could argue that to the cows come home, but that's just the way I look at it. All right. The last piece I want to cover here is the, with the changes to relic eight. Lord Vader, Jedi Master Kenobi, and Admiral Raddus. I used to have these guys kind of in the middle game. The, there are those 
you know, that you could argue that this is your, you know, third or fourth galactic legend. Your profundity kind of slots in there at some point. I think right now, unless they change the way you can get your hands on era magnifiers, these guys kind of need to get moved to the back of your farming list, um, which is unfortunate, right? But I think Executor is still one of the best ways to use Relic 8 materials. And then obviously the other one being Jabba, which are three Relic 8s, right? That's three total Relic 8s, 60 era magnifiers. That's not an absurd thing to ask of an account as long as you're able to save your crystals. If you are smart with your resources, you're going to be able to save for those. And again, you get you think you get that executor, you're earning 400 crystals a day in Fleet Arena, all of a sudden getting those relics really doesn't seem like that tall of a task. But for something like Admiral Raddus, the profundity needs 60 era magnifiers by itself, right? Because he needs a relic 8 and a relic 9. Kenobi is two by himself. Just he needs a whole other team. He needs Commander Tano that... It's kind of hard to... Re I always say that Kenobi to me is one of those that unless you've got the tools to take advantage of him, he's not worth it. And then Lord Vader is four Relicates. 80 Era Magnifiers, which is absurd to me. But the other side of this, I don't know that people fully grasp this as well. You don't get any of his squad arena, grand arena characters during his farm. You get him, and then you need to have Maul, Royal Guard... You know, Darth Vader, Inquisitors, like you just, none of those things are built up with his Galactic Legend Rex. And it's something that I think has always, in my mind, at times held him back. I do really love Lord Vader. I think he gets a lot of unnecessary hate at times because offensively, he's a fantastic Galactic Legend. I think defense, he definitely gets, you know, there's some things that can walk all over him if you're not modded correctly or if your opponent's just a good player. But I just, I can't recommend a new player do these things right now. I think you've got to, your focus should be Executor and Jabba earlier. Well, yes, there's still Relic 8s. You've got three Relic 8 requirements there, which is less than Lord Vader. It's the same amount as the Profundity, and you're probably getting a little bit more bang for your buck with those two things. As far as the updated free-to-play farming guide, I'm going to give that some time. I need to let that sit. See what Capital Games comes out with the Crate Raid. They know we're not happy with rewards. I want to see if they're going to do anything to change them. Or if they're going to remain the same. If they remain the same, if they don't make any sort of change, I think the farming guide will be a little bit more of the same. Except for one huge change. Phoenix will no longer be the first thing you farm. Because they moved Hera Syndulla to a hard node. She's no longer in the cantina. And one of the reasons why Phoenix was so lucrative to do was there wasn't any hard nodes. But with Hera moving, yes, she is alongside the Ghost, which is great, right? That You can farm the two of them together. But I think it will take too long to get her to 7-star to make it worth rushing Phoenix and Thrawn early when there's so many other teams that you could build. So that's the big thing that I'm looking at right now, guys. Let me know what all your thoughts are down below. As always, smash that subscribe button. Leave likes and leave comments. Again, do it for our king. We want to have that special live stream. Again, if you guys are interested as well, I have channel memberships that you guys can get some interesting perks there as well. So just want to plug that at the end of this video. I love all you. May the force be with you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.